Welcome back, folks. We are playing UN Squadron. I'm MC Banjo Mike, and this is the penultimate level of the game, which unfortunately is a son of a bitch. The, uh, the cave level is very hard and kind of discouraging, and a lot of playthroughs uh, of mine have ended on me just getting frustrated at this level and giving up. However, that's not the case today, because today we've got enough money to buy the F-200 Efreet. Best plane in the game, it's the ultimate fighter with every function. Check out this ridiculous Max Vulcan level. That is huge! For comparison's sake, uh, you can only even get to level 6 with the Stealth Ray, and every other plane in the game tops out at 5, as you can see here, the F-20, the F-14, of course the Crusader, and the A-10 doesn't even get past 3. So the f has an amazing Vulcan gun, but it also has access to every single special weapon in the game. And you'll see that the prices on some of the ones we bought in the past have actually gone up. That's not because Old Feller here is gouging us, that's because we're getting a larger amount of each weapon. So instead of having three uh, cluster bombs, now you can get ten. So I'm going to buy the Phoenix, which is one of my favorite weapons in the game. You'll be seeing a lot of that this level. Uh, the Bullpup launches a huge swarm of missiles all around you, which is cool. Um, the Super Shell, not really my favorite. The Thunder Laser is a lot of fun, though, because that fires in three directions, and it goes through enemies, which is going to be useful later on. The Sailing Missile fires missiles straight up and is useful in exactly one place in the game. Uh, however, even better than that is the gun pod, which shoots a Vulcan stream upwards. It's kind of like the anti-A-10. It shoots a Vulcan cannon stream uh, up at 45 degrees. Can't afford to buy that, though, so for this run we're going to get the sailing missiles and the Mega Crush. Note that the Mega Crush costs 10,000 instead of 5,000. That means that I'm getting two instead of one, which is huge. But anyway, enough about special weapons. Let's take a look at our new plane, the F-200. First thing to note is that incredible Vulcan cannon. This thing has been completely maxed out thanks to all the POW capsules that I got when I was doing my canyon runs. It is a thing of beauty. The other thing to notice is that the plane is actually a good deal larger than the A-10 was. In fact, I think it's the biggest plane in the game. That's kind of a drag, but it's also a much faster plane, as you can see when I move around, which makes it possible to avoid some things that would be really hard to get around with the A-10. As for the level itself, this is the cave. As you may or may not know, caves are the natural enemy of the plane, and in fact it makes absolutely no sense to take one into a cave. Of course it also doesn't make sense that this plane is flying at about 4 miles an hour and can simply hover and maneuver its way around gigantic stalactites with no problems, so I guess we probably shouldn't, you know, look too closely at the inner workings of UN Squadron. The cave is tricky because there are places for enemies to come at you from all sides. You know, holes in the floor, holes in the ceiling, they can arrive from the front, the back. Since I'm not using the A-10 anymore, my Vulcan cannon doesn't cover as much of an area of the screen as it used to. In order to compensate for that, I'm using the Phoenix missiles. The Phoenix are fun because they're basically fire and forget seeking missiles. Every time you fire the button, you get two of them and they'll just seek out the nearest enemy and destroy them. That's really useful in a place like this, and in fact, for the last minute or two, I've basically been firing them off non-stop. Thankfully, that part of the level is short enough uh, that you can do this without running out of ammo. In fact, the cave level is extremely short, but that doesn't stop it from being a pain, and that's all because of this guy. The Ceiling Crawler is, I think, the hardest boss in the game, at least if you're not properly equipped to take him out. The problem is that he only has one weak point, which is this blue flashing crystal that just came on screen, uh, and as you can see, it's shielded from the left and right. That means that your choices are, if you want to attack it with the Vulcan gun, park your ship directly to the left of the crystal and shoot at it, which is extremely dangerous, or find a special weapon that can attack uh, that angle. There aren't an awful lot of those, and because I spent all my money buying this expensive plane, I didn't really have the funds to pick up any of them. Um, all I have on me that's useful right now is the sailing missile. In fact, this is kind of the only spot in the game where those are actually useful. Uh, the problem with the sailing missile is that it's not powerful at all. As you can see, I'm emptying dozens of these things into that crystal, and it's still not changing colors, which would indicate that it's taking a serious amount of damage. So this whole section is really tricky, because you're constantly being attacked from all sides by these flame turrets and missile turrets, and you've got to weave your way through them, uh, and through the parts of the boss that are attacking you. None of which can be destroyed, I think. Thankfully, there's that unicorn that you can grab to even the odds a little bit, but uh, with the loadout that I have for this plane, well, I'm in for a tough fight. Eventually I'm going to have to give up and try positioning my ship to use the Vulcan Cannon on that crystal, uh, and once I do, that's going to be very dangerous for me. In the meantime, I've done a pretty good job of avoiding all the fire, um, but that can't go on forever. And now I'm out of ceiling missiles, so uh, as you can see, they barely put a dent in this guy. On the bright side, I have two Mega Crushes, so with the first one I managed to get him into the red, that's a good sign. 
but as you can see, this plane is so big that it's really hard to fit into that space to attack him. And now I'm out of Mega Crushes. Um, I'll use the few Phoenixes that I have left. But I don't like my odds. Yeah, saw that coming. If I want to have a better chance of taking that guy out, I'm going to need enough weapons that I can really put the hurt on. In order for that to happen, I'm going to need some money. So let's, uh, let's take another visit to our friend the Quartermaster Corps. Obviously, you don't want to buy any weapons for this mission, because that would just be a waste of money. Normally, I try to limit the number of Quartermaster Corps runs I do in the game, because honestly, it's not a whole lot of fun. Uh, I would rather try and fail on the harder levels where you can at least make some decent money than spend my time flying back and forth with this stupid cannon over and over again. It gets frustrating if you're at the end of the game and you need money because you either can't afford the F-200 or you can't afford to outfit it. So yeah, sometimes you're going to wind up stuck doing four or five runs in a row on this place, and that's just boring. So far I've been pretty lucky in this game and I haven't had to waste much time there. Alright, let's take another crack at this level. Now that we have a bit of money, we can afford to buy some good weapons. So this time, I'm going to take the, well, the Phoenix Missiles as usual, but I'm also going to take the Gun Pods. And these are so good that I'm not even going to bother with the Sealing Missiles. And by the way, did you notice that the Sealing Missiles are called Sailing Missiles in the store, but Sealing Missiles on your weapon loadout screen? I'm guessing that there's a little bit of a glitch in the translation there. Anyway, we've already seen this level, so uh, let me take a second to talk to you about the uh, the YF-23. I never really understood the point of that plane. It only seems to exist for this one level, and while this level is a huge pain, I don't know if I could justify spending $500,000 on a ship that fires weapons upwards when there are basically one, one and a half levels in the game where that's useful. I suppose if you really, really liked one of the, uh, the planes that I didn't buy, the forward-firing planes, um, I suppose that you could consider getting that so that you could just survive this level and then carry on to the final level. But it seems to me that the uh, the Efreet is such a good choice for the last level of the game that I don't see why you would want to buy anything else, really. Once again, weaving our way around the stalactites and stalagmites. Remember, stalactite, C, that stands for ceiling. Stalagmite, G, grows up from the ground. That's how you can tell them apart. That could come in handy if you ever become a spelunker or something. Ooh, this place is full of bad dudes. I should have started firing those Phoenix missiles a while ago. I'm not sure what I was thinking. Also, something that I missed on my first playthrough, but there's a hidden star in this area, uh, which is in that little corner there, and which I only found because my Phoenix missiles went through there as they were trying to blow something up. That's actually more useful than you might think it would be at this point in the game, because, again, you can spend so much money on the f just outfitting it with weapons, that, uh, yeah, you'll need every cent you can get if you're having trouble with the final level. Or with this one, for that matter. Alright, so we're coming up on the boss again, and this time, we've got what we need to put the hurt on, in a big way. Here goes the gun pod. This thing is beautiful, because it does a lot of damage, but at the same time, I don't really need to think about it too much, you know? Like, I can concentrate on avoiding the missiles and things, and just fire these off. I have 20 of them, that's way more than I need to destroy this boss. So, if I just keep this running at all times, I can concentrate on avoiding taking damage. The gun pod is definitely one of the highest damage output special weapons in the game. Unfortunately, it's not useful in very many places, but considering how much of a pain this guy is, I'm happy to take anything that I can get that'll help me with him. Things are getting kind of hairy, but I still haven't used either of my Mega Crushes yet, so I'm pretty confident that I can take this guy out. Let's fire off number one right now. Ah, that's what I like to see. Okay, with this jerk taken care of, we can move on to the last level of the game. It's a no cakewalk for sure, but I don't know, overall I feel like it's a little easier than this level, or at least a lot less annoying. Plus it's going to give me a chance to show off a whole bunch of cool special weapons that you haven't seen before. So please enjoy this fairly reasonable win quote along with this very pixelated image of the Efreet, and uh, ready yourselves for our next and final episode of Let's Play UN Squadron. See you then.